today we're going to make a shift. It's a pretty significant shift in, in the Lord's Prayer. We're in this study of learning to pray from Jesus because like, we want to know, like, like the disciples, they, they noticed Jesus, like his prayer life helped to fuel his ministry. And as we're called as everyday missionaries, as, as, as moms and dads and, and neighbors and coworkers, all those roles that we fill, like the question is, how do we how do we access God's presence, his wisdom, his power, his strength? And so we've been using the Lord's Prayer. We've been dissecting it, saying the Lord's Prayer is something more than just something we mumble on a Sunday morning. The Lord's Prayer should be something that like, captivates our heart and, and guides us as we encounter God. And so big shift today. What we've been doing is been looking to the bigness of God right? Our Father who art in heaven, like, God, you're in this other realm that transcends this realm. Holy, hallowed, sacred is your name, right? And last week, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. And so our necks have been craned looking for the presence of God, and today it gets personal. Like, today we're like, we realize that, that this big God cares about you and I, that, that God cares about our daily needs, our daily concerns, the things that we hope for, the things that we, the, the, the things that we pray for. Though God is big and powerful and holy, he's also personable. And so today we pray for our daily bread, um, which makes me happy because I love bread. I love uh, Bread, pasta, you name the carbohydrate, I love it. Um, there's nothing better than homemade bread. If you have a bread maker, you know what I'm talking about, that warm smell, the warm, that you feel the moisture coming off of it and the crusty crust, right? I love bread. Thank you, God, for daily bread. But I don't think he means, like, bread, though. I don't think the Lord's Prayer, like, it has something to do with it, but he's not just talking about bread. So what is the Bible talking about. What are we talking about when we say daily bread? Um, well, bread triggers all sorts of images in the Bible, right? There's bread throughout the story of God. And one of the, like, when you say daily bread, like, I can't help but think about, there was a time and a season in the life of God's people in the Old Testament where, like, they literally needed daily bread from God in order to survive, right? If you, if you remember the story, um, Moses led the Israelites out of uh, Egypt. They were in slavery for 400 years. I mean, you talk about a disruption, right? They were for 400 years. And uh, Moses leads them through the Red Sea, right, and, and into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, they get out there and they realize, we don't have anything to eat. <laughs> like, what are we doing out here, Moses? And they get really angry and antsy and upset and frustrated. Sound familiar? And they're like, man, if we could just go back to Egypt, like there at least we had food to eat. And God provides food for them. Literally daily bread. So in our Lord's Prayer, we say, give us this day our daily bread like God's like, yeah, I, I know this story. So he gives them this bread. Uh, it's, called, it's called manna. It means, what is it? Because it's not exactly sure what this stuff was made of. Um, but there, in Exodus 16 is where we find this. Um, so I think we've got this to throw on the screen. Exodus 16, 4. Um, it says this. The Lord said to Moses, behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Right? So he said, every day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide food for you. And so this stuff showed up every day outside their tent called manna, and they would go and collect it. And the thing is, they could only collect one day's worth. And if they tried to keep it overnight, it would spoil and rot. It just past there in Exodus 16, 9, uh, Moses is like, don't leave any till morning. And some did, and it would rot, and it bred worms, and it stank. And so if they were like, you know what? Why are we doing this daily bread thing? Let's get some for all week. And actually, they would show up, and in the morning, it would be rotten and filled with worms. They're like, no, it doesn't work that way. God set it up there would be daily bread. And so, for 40 years, the Israelites depended 
every single day for God to provide them bread. Right? Can you imagine like every morning, like you wake up in the tent, you're in your tent and you're like, man, I'm hungry. You get those morning hungers, like, oh, my tummy's all rumbly. And you're like, oh, I don't have any food though. Lord, please let there be food again today. And you look, yes. That manna, it tastes delicious. It's like this honey wafer stuff, right? And so like every day they had, uh, every day they would go out there and gather. And so as I just think of this, the, the gather day after day after day, God provides, God provides daily bread, daily bread. How do you think that impacted the relationship with God? All right. Like how, 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 does that, how does that knit them together? How did that impact the relationship with God that every day, for 40 years, literally, if God didn't show up and provide, they would starve. And every day, God says, I'm here for you. I've got this, your daily bread. So we pray, give us this day, our daily bread. You think of them, the Israelites, wandering in the wilderness. But there's another passage of bread that's connected to it that, that our minds jump. So, um, if we, we jump forward into the New Testament, um, we come to the story of bread and Jesus in the wilderness. There's a story in, in both Matthew 4 and, and Luke uh, chapter 4 where Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. And he's in the wilderness for 40 days, right? 40 days, 40 years. Like maybe God's trying to connect these stories for us. So, so Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days and he's fasting, which means he doesn't eat for 40 days. And he then has an encounter with Satan, with, with the tempter, the evil one who comes in, in like bodily form to Jesus and they have this confrontation. And then the first thing that happens is Satan's like, Jesus, I know you're hungry, man. Like you haven't eaten anything. So like, Bro, just take, take a rock and just make it, make it turn into bread. Like if you're, you're tired of this whole situation, fix it. Here's bread, you're God. Make, it, make, it, make this rock turn to bread. But Jesus refuses in the moment to use his own power against the will of God, like to not depend on Father God. And so Jesus says this, and to Matthew 4, 4, he answers them, it is written... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we're in the wilderness again, this time for 40 days, not for 40 years. And Jesus talks about bread. And he says, like, but it's not just about the bread. Man can't live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, if you notice, Jesus says, it is written. It is written. So where is it written? This is the beauty of, of, of the scriptures that is that it's, it's connected. So we start, you know, in Exodus, the, the Old Testament, and we see the Israelites wandering for 40 years. And we go to the New Testament. We go to Matthew 4, and we read Jesus. And he says, it's written. Well, where is it written? Back in the Old Testament. Right, this beautiful interplay that God is trying to grab our attention. And so God says, Jesus says, it is written, you don't live by bread alone. <clears throat> and he's quoting Deuteronomy 8.3. So in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, in chapter 8, verse 3, it says, uh, but man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of, of, of the Lord. So it's like, okay, when we're talking about bread, we're not just talking about bread. So what are we talking about? This passage in Deuteronomy is so important. We're going to read it um, today or this week in our, in our weekly readings. It's one of our prescribed readings. But in this passage, it says you don't live by, by bread alone. But even if that's true, God still provided bread for you. In fact, God provided everything for you. Your clothes didn't wear out when you're in the wilderness. You had, you had food, you had water, you had everything you need, but it's not gonna be like that forever because there's a, pre, there's a promise that someday you're gonna make it to the promised land. And when you make it to the promised land, it's gonna be milk and honey and bread everywhere. 
Like you're going to be like an all you can eat buffet. Like that's what the Lord has for them, for his people. So he's like, yes, right now you're eating manna, but someday there's going to be a carb overload. Like it's all for you, milk, honey, wine, bread, land. It's all for you. But he says a warning, he says, but when you get to that land, when you get to that day, when God's not providing every day, but he gives you stability, when you get there, don't forget God. God says, don't forget me because I know how people are. Like God knows how we're wired. It says in Deuteronomy 8, 17, a little bit further, it says, beware like when you get to the promised land, when life is good, be aware, because this is what your heart's going to say. My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. Right? What you're going to say when you get to the promised land and life is good and you don't need God every day for bread, you're going to be like, well, I don't need God because I did this. I built this house. I planted this grain. I baked this bread. Right? God knows that we forget. And so we have this fundamental question in our life. Do we lift up God or do we lift up ourselves? Do we lift up God or do we lift up ourselves? When you don't literally have to get food from God every day because you have a farm and a house and grain and a mill and real bread, God says, don't forget that it all came from me. But you know what happened? They forgot. They got to the holy land. They got to the promised land. They started making their own houses, their own farms, their own vineyards, their own wine, their own grain, and they forgot. And in that is a reminder for us. So what are these stories, all right? We got stories of the wilderness. We got stories of Jesus. What do these stories have to do with our prayer life? I think it has everything to do with our prayer life. Because here's the thing. You and I, most of us don't have to pray daily for bread, right? You and I don't wake up every morning with empty cupboards, empty pantries, empty refrigerators and go like, man, what am I going to eat, right? So we have everything around us. And in the midst of just having things, we forget God, like, I forget God. Like, I'm guilty of this all the time, that, that in, in the midst of life, of living life, and, and having school, and wife, and friends, and family, and things, like, I forget that all of this comes from God, because we have refrigerators, and pantries, and we have chemicals that makes our food last for weeks and months, right? So, like, we don't literally have to wake up, and so we forget that God has provided. We forget that it's a gift, that everything we have is a gift. Like, I think it'd be different if, if we did have to depend on God daily. Like, if we had to, um, like, every day, if we woke up and, like, man, I hope there's a car in my garage because it disappeared last night. I hope there's clothes in my closet because they, they all vanished last night. I hope there's food. Like, like, that would be a crazy world to live in, but that's the, the life of the Israelites, right? But we don't have that. We have everything, and so we just get used to having it, and we assume that our hands made this. And so Jesus says, when you pray, don't forget don't forget that's daily bread that you take for granted. It comes from God. Every gift you have, everything you have, everything you own, everything you eat, everything you need, it all comes from God, even if it doesn't just show up daily. And so by recognizing that God provides for our, our daily opportunity, our daily needs, it gives us an opportunity to thank God every day. And not only that, it's a reminder that, that as we approach God and say, like, thank you, Lord, for the physical needs, there's this reminder that we don't live by bread alone, but by the, the word and presence of God, that we need more than physical things, that, that when we thank God for the stuff that we had, it's a reminder that life isn't just about the stuff, right? That life is bigger than the clothes we wear and the food that we eat, that we need the Lord's presence, you may fill your body with actual bread, but our, body, our souls need spiritual bread, or they starve. We need the nourishment of our body. We need the nourishment of our, of our spirits, and this happens every day. And so 
It's a reminder that, that God is behind the daily blessings that we have, the daily stuff that we accumulate, the things that we use. It all comes from God. And so when we take the Lord's prayer and we start, our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name, may your kingdom come, but we come then to our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. It's a reminder of who's present in the bread, who has given us the bread. It's God. And so we're reminded that this prayer is not just something we do, but it, it's, it's a conversation to be had. That prayer is about building a relationship with God. And so this part of the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, as we learn to pray this, it's an opportunity for us every day to, to really get to know God and to spend time with God. It's that big shift of God, I'm looking to you, and now I'm acknowledging that God, you're looking at me. And so I think there's three things, three, three things that it does. Let's just, nuts and bolts, three things that praying daily for our daily bread does. The first thing is this. It helps to give us guidance in, in our daily life. Right, no matter what season of life you're in, no matter what you're going through, whether it's the best season of your life, it's a horrible season of life, like every day we get to ask this question, like, God, what do I need today? What kind of wisdom do I need today? What strength do I need today? Like, what physical resources do I, do, do you, like, do you, do I need? What do you have for me? Because, honestly, this day that you and I have, this Sunday, the 16th of August, it's the only day that we have. We don't have yesterday, and we think there'll be a tomorrow, but this is the day we have. And so God has something for you and me on this day. And so we need to start this day by saying, Lord, what is it that I'm supposed to recognize? What is it that I need? What do I need to ask for? Today is that day. Tomorrow is going to have its own need. So guess what? Tomorrow we need to ask. So every day we need to ask, what is this day? And Lord, what do you have for me? And what am I supposed to bring to it? Right? It's really like inviting God to be a part of every single moment. And so like you might be having a great season of life. And honestly, those are the seasons it's easiest to forget God. Because you got your farm, and you got your vineyards, and you got your grain, and you got your mills. And you're like, I, I did this, right? But even if life is good, it's all pointless without God. So we still need to invite God into it, because God still has a mission for you. As an everyday missionary, God is still calling you, even if life is good. And it's true even if we're in a struggling season of life, because sometimes life is difficult. And so you might be going through a season of hardship, there may be pain in your life and sorrow. Like as a community, we're in this midst of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're in the midst of all this stuff going on. And so we, we pray for the big thing, like, Lord, take this away. Whatever the pain is, whatever you're battling, we say, Lord, take this away. But we can't stop there. Because even though we want, let's say, take, Lord, take the coronavirus away, make, make us back to normal, we do pray that, but also, despite the fact that it's here, well, what do I need to do today, Lord? Like, life still goes on, even in the midst of battles, even in the midst of hardships. And so we need God to supply for us every day. So it allows God to be involved in the, in the, the, the nitty-gritty uh, of our lives. Ask that. The second thing it does, it helps us to build a heart of gratitude and generosity, all right, so why do we pray for our daily bread? It builds in us like this understanding that all that we have is from God. And when we realize how much God has provided, it allows us to live with open hands, to share the bread that we have. Because I can't pray, like if I'm gonna sit down and say like, um, like Lord, I pray for my daily bread and I notice, wow, I have way more than bread. Like I, in my, you go check my refrigerator, my pantry. I've got way more than bread. I've got a house. I've got a family. I've got, I've got a vehicle that works. And so you can just go down the list. And you and I have different things. And we have different seasons. We have different stuff. But you have things. And so if every day I go, wow, God, I don't, I don't need nearly as much as I think I do. Right? It helps to humble my heart. It helps to release the grip that material the material world can have on me and just realize like, wow, I'm surrounded by stuff. Thank you, God. Like, man, I, I, just think in my own life, I can get so whiny about the things that I don't have. 
I can think about all the things I'd like to go buy or the places I'd like to do, go to, the things I'd like to travel, the things I'd like to see, like all this stuff. But every day if I say, man, actually I'm surrounded by stuff that God's given me, like it helps to just like give me a grateful heart and realize I have a lot to share. Right, because now I've got all this stuff and, and now I, like, I don't need to hold on to this and hoard this because even if I gave it all away, God would still give me my daily bread. Right, and so it helps, to, helps us to, to create a caring and generous heart within us that, that, that God tells us not to worry. And last, it solidifies our relationship with the Lord. Right, so it invites God into the daily needs. It helps us have a generous heart and it builds our relationship with God the Father. By interacting with him every day, it helps to knit our lives to God. Because here's the thing, it's, it's the small talk of life that builds relationships. And this is true with, with anyone in your family, whether it's a spouse, with your kids, with your best friend, with your parents. It's those little everyday conversations about like what's got us excited and what, what's got us bummed out? Why are we frustrated? What are we hopeful for? What are we excited about? What are we sad about? What makes us angry? It's the daily like nonsense conversations of life that help to weave our lives together. Those are the threads, the stories that, that, that make our life one. And it's true in, in relationships with humans and it's true in our relationship with God. That if we just like invite God into the day, God, give us this daily bread, and here's what I've got going on. Here's what I need. Here's the meeting I have later. Here's the difficult conversation. Here's what's got me stressed. Like, we start to realize, and we start to hear from the Lord when he gives us guidance, when God starts giving us strength and wisdom, when he starts answering back and we start giving to God, we start entering this relationship, and it solidifies this, this relationship. Where God, like, instead of just being like, well, who is this God? Like, well, we know who God is. It's the God that cares for me. And it's the God that we speak to every day. God tells us in Scripture time and again to not be afraid. Don't be afraid. I've got this covered. I've got your daily bread. You don't need to be afraid. And God wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. Right? It's the type of God that he is. He says, I'm here for you. And by going to the Lord every day, it gives us an opportunity to experience that reality. And so what I want us to do is just to be the type of people that learn to pray. Right? God, may your kingdom come, but in that coming, may you care for me and what I have going on. And Lord, will you be with me and will you partner with me? And I remember how you were there yesterday and I have faith in how you're going to be with me today and tomorrow. And I get it, the daily prayer, like it, it's hard to fit it into our busy lives and our busy schedule. And I realize there's all sorts of obstacles, not just physical obstacles of time, but in our heads. Because we tell ourselves all sorts of stories of why we don't pray daily. Like maybe you grew up just thinking that God doesn't care about you. God doesn't care for you. I don't want to bother God with the little things. God's got bigger things to worry about. Like that's a lie that keeps us from God. We're too busy or, or we think that we're strong enough, that we're self-made and, and that we can do it on our own. But Jesus' prayer does away with all of the excuses. He says, no, God does care about you and your daily life and what's going on and you are not alone. And so learning to pray this, it's almost like the Lord tricks us. It's like he tricks us into praying because he says, give us this day our daily bread. And so if he just gives us the strength we need for today, if that manna, if that bread just shows up for that one day and it's not enough for tomorrow, it means tomorrow I'm going to have to show up again in the presence of the Lord and say, God, will you provide so every day when I wake up, the alarm clock goes off and I get ready to start a new day. And I wonder, God, is it out there? Are you out there for me? Are you ready to provide? Every day, God says, I am here for your physical needs and your spiritual needs. Daily, I am present. So I just want us to lean into that reality. 
Okay? So I want us to, here's a call to action. I want you to, to pray for your daily bread and make it a priority this week. All right, we're going to, we're practicing the Lord's Prayer. We're not just learning about it, but we're actually engaging with it. And so I want us to pray for our daily bread. And in that, like, it might be helpful to make a list of things you're grateful for. Like, if you don't have a journal where you're listing what you're grateful for, you're missing opportunity to see God's daily bread. So, um, so pray for God's daily bread. What do you need? Um, I mean, you tell people all the time, I know you, you're like, I'll pray for you. Well, this is where you put those prayers, all right? It's in our daily bread. And it's in the practicing uh, of the daily presence of God that we grow that relationship and helps us. And I just can't but help but wonder, how, how will we become more equipped as everyday missionaries if we pray daily for God's presence? It's part of Jesus' prayer, and it should be part of ours.